As a matter of fact, uh, we were at the dinner yesterday with all Latin American presidents that are present and participating here in Davos. The dinner was late for one hour exactly because of that reason. It was a historic moment for Latin America uh, where the presidents decided to position and align their comments in order to defend and uh, authorize this new uh, re regime, the fallout of the dictatorship of uh, Maduro in Venezuela and recognize Juan as the transitory president uh, of Venezuela. So I think now it's different because the civil society, the opposition and the international community are in favor of democracy in Venezuela. It was uh, too late and it's a good time that's happening in order to have a more uh, sustainable and democratic government in Venezuela going forward. Do you worry that there's an economic toll that could spread? across the broader region? I mean, we consider the terrible circumstances that the people of Venezuela have had to endure. Yes, indeed. Uh, we are very empathic and sympathetic what's going on in Venezuela as neighbors, as a regional power, as Brazil. We feel it's our duty to position ourselves and to help, mm. given the social, economic, political and humanitarian crisis that was happening in Venezuela. Now it's time to give them food, uh, medicine and help them uh, to rebuild Venezuela in the next 20, 25 years. The big headline here, of course, has been President Jair Bolsonaro coming to Davos and really trying to sell Brazil, making some big promises about economic reform in the country. You've had a chance to meet with him. Do you think he can deliver? That's the big question. Uh, he has uh, been doing 20 days of his government. The markets are giving the benefit of the doubt. He has surrounded himself with very capable people. He came with his top ministers, Minister of Finance, which we hosted a lunch for Paulo Guedes, and the Minister of Justice, Sergio Moro, the former justice, ju judge for the car wash uh, operations, mm. and other very uh, technical people from the Brazilian government. Uh, in our lunch with more than 100 global institutional investors from Latin and from the region, they're very impressed and they understood the, the context in Brazil and the potential benign cycle that is about to, to start. Top priority is for sure the approval of the social security reform, the modernization and efficiency of the state, and attraction of foreign direct investment in this privatization package. Mm. But the big question is the one you raised. Uh, it's execution and negotiation right. with Congress in order to approve and move forward to this next level. And that is part of the reason why there are concerns about the division that Bolsonaro has caused with some of his outspoken comments, you might say. But we see these parallels people draw saying, OK, I like his economic policies, not so sure about the social commentary. And then people simply jump and say he's Brazil's Trump. Do you think that's a fair comparison? I don't think so. Uh, if you look, he has a liberal agenda. He's a favor uh, democracy. He was elected majority of the votes. He's implying meritocracy uh, in the government and nomination of the key chairs for, for ministers. He has a very uh, pragmatic agenda of reforms. He wants to reduce the deficit and sustainable debt to GDP that Brazil has because we have a critical fi fiscal situation that has right. to be resolved. Trump is increasing the deficit with all the expenses, walls, etc. Uh, I would dare to say if Bolsonaro is successful implementing those reforms in the next uh, six months, mm -hmm. he'll be remembered in the future more than a Margaret Thatcher of the tropics than the Donald Trump of the tropics. Wow. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.